So this session is um, on next generation MVPN deployment models. And I'm Luke DeGain, I work for Cisco. I'm a technical leader at the services department. This is the agenda, so I'll give a quick overview of what uh, multicast over VPN uh, is uh, all about. I'll quickly give an introduction to the next generation MVPN goals. We'll have a look at the old style of doing MVPN, multicast over VPN, something that we've did for the last 15 years. And then we'll have a look at the building blocks of how to do the next generation MVPN models. Core protocols, core trees, overlay singling, and so on. And at the end, we'll ra wrap up with uh, having a look at all the possibilities, all the possible models that you can deploy, and we'll um, end with a conclusion. MPLS, it's been around a long time, since about 1996, 97, and it's still going strongly, even to my surprise a little bit. Other protocols have come and went away, for example, ATM, um, but MPLS is still going strong. More and more customers are still deploying it. We are still seeing enhancements to MPLS, new features, and so on. Um, notably, one of the newer enhancements, for example, would be NFV, Network Functions Virtualization. Um, it's a good example of widening MPLS. MPLS started off as a typical service provider um, networking protocol. But more and more enterprise customers are using it and deploying it as well. And now we are seeing it's also ramping up in the data center environment. Not only that, but one of the newer things, and I think there's a breakout session uh, talking a little bit about SDN and NFV as well. NFV is bringing um, services into the data center, um, more precisely cloud services. It will be possible, for example, for customers to go to a GUI, a web page, click on the kind of services they want, firewall, NAT, database services, web services, and so on, and deploy it instantaneously inside the data center. The way it's done is by daisy changing the different services one after the other on virtual machines through the data center. Now, different customers can do this, so we have to make sure that the traffic from diff different customers is separated from each other. And the way to do this is, for example, by using MPLS VPN. Another example where we see MPLS getting even more traction is, for example, seamless MPLS or unified MPLS. In that case, we see that we no longer run MPLS just in the core of a service provider network, but it can also be widening out into the aggregation or the distribution part of the network. Right? That's what seamless or unified MPLS does. So a typical example would be mobile networks where more and more uh, MPLS goes into the aggregation part of the network. So MPLS, and more precisely MPLS VPN, is still getting um, a lot of traction. Right? You have layer 2 VPN, you have layer 3 VPN. Both are still growing strongly. So, what about multicast over MPLS VPN? Well, unicast MPLS VPN is widely used now. Not that many people have deployed multicast yet. Um, we've had a solution for the last 15 years or so, which we'll call the Rosen, Rosen GRE model, after the person uh, who originally invented it. Invented it. Um, it was fine. But we also took the opportunity to look at how we could improve things. Right? Now, with the Rosen model, one of the specifics was that the traffic in the core of the network was actually IP traffic. It was GRE encapsulated. So it wasn't really taking the advantage of MPLS in the network. Not only that, but if we would be able to encapsulate the traffic as MPLS, the multicast traffic as MPLS, then we could get rid of PIM and multicast in the core of the network. 
not only that, but if it was MPLS encapsulated, then we would also be able to take advantages from some of the features that we have with LDP, traffic engineering, and so on, like fast restoration, fast rerouting, or bandwidth reservation, and so on. So that's why we started looking at next generation MVPN models. Um, obviously, we would like also parity with IPv6. Uh, IPv6 typically, like with multicast, is typically done as a hindsight. We always look at unicast first, and then afterwards we say, oh, well, maybe we need to deploy multicast as well, at least for some customers. The same happens with IPv4, IPv6. Now, everything that I will mention here applies to both IPv4 and IPv6 equally. And by the way, we have the next generation models. Everything we did with the old model is still there. Pe vendors still support it and is still seeing new enhancements as well. So this is a recap of the old style, how to carry multicast over VPN networks as we have been doing for the last 15 years. There are basically two things to this so-called Rosen model. You always have a default MDT and a data MTD. Now, MDT is just a multicast distribution tree. It's just a tree for the multicast forwarding. We have a default tree. It means that all the leaf routers, the egress PE routers, are connected to each other over this distribution tree in the core of your network. Okay. It's always there. As soon as you configure it, it's there. And that's good because it means, because it's always there, it can carry all the customer multicast traffic, plus all the signaling, the PIM signaling, can be carried across the default MDT as well. Okay. Now, the only downside with this model, with this default MDT, is that if there are certain flows, multicast flows, which are really high rate, think of video traffic, then that traffic would go to all the egress or leave PE routers, even though those PE routers might not have receivers at all. Then those routers would just drop the multicast traffic. This is not very efficient. That's why there is another kind of MDT, multicast distribution tree, the so-called data tree. This is set up on the mount. So only when it's necessary, only for high rate flows. And it also only goes to the receivers, only to the egress PE routers where there are receivers. So only to the PE routers who are interested in receiving that multicast traffic. So this is more efficient. Those two things together, default MTT and data MTT, they form the Rosen model. So when we mention the name Rosen, think of default plus data trees. Still with the old style, what you had to do in the core of your MPLS VPN network is run PIM slash multicast. To forward the multicast customer traffic, you also had to enable PIM in the core of your network. But between the PE and the CE routers, you, you also had PIM slash multicast. To carry the traffic and the signaling across your MPLS network, you needed a control plane protocol for multicast, which is PIM. And that was running between the PE routers. And we call that overlay signaling. Okay. How is it done? Well, across this default MDT that I just mentioned, those PE routers are all directly, so-called directly, connected to each other. So in the end, you have two layers or two planes of PIM multicast. You have one in the core of your network and you have one in overlay inside the VPN. Now with the next generation models, we'll have more possibilities, more choices. We still have the old model where you have PIM multicast in the core and it's still supported. We still see development there. If you want to run that, no problem. But we'll have more choices now. We'll have something which is called MLDP, which is an enhancement to LDP. 
which you all know, which is used for unicast MPLS signaling. The M stands for multipoint. So it's really signaling by LDP, but not for unicast traffic, but for multicast traffic. So it's in a multipoint fashion. Okay. This is the protocol as we know, LDP, but just with a few enhancements. Another possibility is traffic engineering. We've had traffic engineering also for more than 15 years, but it was in a point-to-point -point fashion. Now, with a few enhancements, we can make traffic engineering function in a point-to-multipoint -point fashion. It means you have one ingress router or one head and router and multiple egress router or tail end routers. Perfect to transport multicast across an MPLS core. And finally, the fourth solution is ingress replication. And there we use a trick. In fact, there's no new signaling in the core. What we will do is we will reuse the unicast LSP, so label switch path, throughout your MPLS core. We reuse the unicast LSPs in your MPLS network, but we use them to ca carry the multicast traffic. Now, to make that work, that ingress router, who will send the multicast traffic into your MPLS core, needs to first replicate the multicast traffic and then send it on into the MPLS cloud over the unicast LSPs. Let's have a look at those in a bit more detail. So MLDP can do two things, basically. It can build a point to multipoint tree. Meaning, you have an ingress router who can send traffic into the MPLS cloud. You have core routers doing the replication for the multicast packets, which are label encapsulated. And then you can go to one or more egress PE routers. It doesn't have to be all of them, but it can be a subset of all the PE routers for which multicast is enabled inside that VPN. So this is very optimum for traffic delivery. It only goes to the egress PE routers where we have receivers behind. So only to egress PE routers or leaf routers who are interested in receiving that traffic. But it can also do something which is called multipoint to multipoint signaling. This is a special tree because with multipoint to multipoint signaling, will have bidirectional traffic. Traffic can go up to, well, into the tree, up to the root. The root is the starting point of the tree, kind of. But it can also go from the root down towards the leaves. This would mean that if you have a multipoint to multipoint tree between the PE routers, any PE router can inject traffic onto that MDT or tree, and it will be received by all other leaf routers. This is really optimum for state because MLDP will signal this with a minimum amount of control plane information. And by the way, MLDP will be the only protocol who can do a multi point to multi point trees. The other protocols can only do point to multi point trees. And then the third option is traffic engineering. So traffic engineering has been enhanced to do point to multipoint signaling. Now, there's one thing specific about traffic engineering and signaling. It is that the signaling is always started by the head-end router. It's the head-end router who needs to set up the trees, be it point to point or point to multipoint. It's always set up by the head-end router. So the head-end router needs to know the topology once it knows the topology of the network and knows who the interested egress or tail end routers are, it can start the signaling towards the tail end routers. That signaling um, will happen, but how does the head end router know who the tail end routers are? There are two possibilities. Either it's just by configuration, you configure the tail end routers on the head end router or the head-end router will learn that automatically by a signaling protocol. 
There the signaling protocol is BGP. And we call that BGP auto discovery. So BGP will automatically advertise from tail end router to head end router and say, listen up, I'm an egress router, I'm interested in this multicast traffic inside that VPN. So I would like to be part of this point to multi point tree. I would like to be a tail end router of this point to multi point tree. This is advertised by BGP towards the head end router. And then the head end router can signal the point to multi point tree towards those tail end routers. This signaling happens as it used to before with point to multi point traffic engineering tunnels with path messages. They go hop by hop. It's RCP. RCP is the signaling protocol for traffic engineering. And in the reverse direction, we have the reservation message, setting up the path end to end. Now, the tricky part here is that this signaling will happen end to end for each leg of the point to multi point tree. In this case, we have three legs here. The signaling is always end to end. So if you think about it, we'll have a lot of path and reservation messages. We have a lot of signaling just to set up one point to multi point tree. Finally, the fourth option is ingress replication. As I mentioned before, with ingress replication, there's no new signaling protocol in the core. We are going to actually reuse the unicast LSPs already set up for MPLS VPN layer 3 that we had before. That means that you cannot have replication in the core of your network. The replication needs to be on the ingress PE router. That's not very efficient. The efficient way to deliver multicast is to do replication where it's needed, which is typically as close to the receiver as possible, so somewhere in the core of your network. Here, replication needs to be on the ingress PE router. So in the end, you the multicast packet is sent copy by copy each time on one unicast LSP. The only thing here is that besides the unicast label, which is used to get the packet from the head end to the tail end router, there is also an MVPN label. And this MVPN label is needed because the egress PE router needs to identify that it's a multicast packet and tie it with a specific VPN on the egress PE router. And this signaling will typically happen again by BGP from egress PE to the ingress PE router. Now, as, you, as I mentioned, this is not very efficient. So typically, this is not your everyday deployment. The use cases for ingress replication will be rather limited. You would typically only do that if you have routers somewhere in a part of your network who do not understand MLDP or point to multi point traffic engineering. Or Another use case could be, for example, when you do inter-autonomous uh, routing between two ASBR routers, autonomous system border routers, you just have one link. It's a point-to-point -point link. There you could deploy this um, ingress replication model as well. But it's not for your everyday use. What kind of core three types do we have, regardless of what kind of core protocol you are using. We have a multi-directional inclusive PMSI. Now, a PMSI is a provider multicast service interface. It's a representation of this MDT that you have in the core as an interface. So on the Ingress PE or the Egress PE router, the PMSI will be represented as an interface. Right? The default MTT, the data MTT, they will be linked to this uh, virtual interface on the PE or the edge router. You can have a default MDT. It means that all the routers are connected to each other. This can be one multipoint to multipoint tree or a full mesh of point to multipoint trees. That means for every PE router, in this case you have four, you would have four point to multipoint trees. Together they will form also one default MDT. 
You have a selective PMSI. Selective because it only goes to a certain subset of PE routers, not necessarily towards all of them. And it's also unidirectional. Packets go from the ingress PE router to the egress PE router. Routers are not in reverse. So this is one point to multipoint three. And then lastly, we have a multidirectional selective PMSI, another kind of MDT. We call that a partitioned MDT as well. Here, this one is between a subset of PE routers, not necessarily all of them, and can be unidirectional or bidirectional. Can be a point to multipoint tree or actually a multipoint to multipoint tree. Don't forget, by using the next generation models, when we have in the core MPLS, you forward multicast over MPLS in the core, the signaling protocols MLDP or point to multipoint TE, does not matter which one. The traffic forwarding in the core, so on P routers, is always in a point to multipoint fashion. So in the data plane, what you would have on a P router is that a multicast packet comes in as a labeled packet. We do a lookup in the LFIP, the label forwarding instance base, so basically the layered tree a uh, multicast forwarding table, but for multicast packets. We do a lookup of the label, we remove the label, do a packet replication, put the new label on top of the packet, an outgoing label, and switch the packet out of the router. And we would do that for all of the outgoing interfaces. So in the data plane, we always forward the multicast packets in a point-to-multipoint fashion. Even if, for example, in a control plane, you have a multipoint to multipoint tree, the data is still forwarded in a point to multipoint fashion. So which core protocol should you choose? Well, we've always had PIM, and that's a good choice. Um, it works. It's been working for a long time now. People know it, but the people who operate the networks, people who design networks, they know how it works. So that's the advantage. The disadvantage is that you have to run PIM and multicast in the core of your network, which is not what some people like to have. With MLDP and point to multipoint TE, well, there actually you will have to have an enhancement to those protocols to be able to forward multicast packet in a point to multipoint fashion. With PIM, you kind of have a soft state protocol. Every 60 seconds, you have to send some control packets, join, prunes, and so on. With MLDP, that's not the case. It's hard state. You send it once, and that's it. Why? Because it runs on top of TCP. And point to multipoint TE is a soft state as well. Now, the big advantage, of course, with MLDP and point to multipoint TE is that your encapsulation is MPLS. Added benefit, you, will can, you can have fast restoration, fast reroute. Whereas with IP, that was not possible a few years ago. Now, yes, you can have other schemes like IP LFA, loop-free alternate, but that's pretty recent, and the coverage is not 100% there. Or not necessarily 100%. MLDP, one of the big benefits is that you can have a multipoint to multipoint trees, which is not something that the other uh, protocols can give you. With traffic engineering, there the big benefit is that you can have bandwidth reservation, but, and you can also have other constraints. However, with traffic engineering, the control plane is a bit more heavy. You have a lot more uh, control, pla control plane packets going um, forward and backwards. Okay. So in the end, uh, PIM and MLDP are very flexible. They kind of work for all your multicast applications that you might have. With point to multipoint TE, uh, it will be typically used when you have a few sources in a few sites. And the receivers are a bit static, meaning you don't have receivers joining and leaving every few minutes. It has to be a bit more static. Why? Because the signaling in point to multipoint TE is a bit more heavy. So you don't want the receivers to come and go every minute. So typically for point to multipoint TE, 
There the use case will be video delivery. You have one or two sites for redundancy, streaming all the videos, thousands of channels, to a fixed set of receivers. Signaling edge to edge. Don't forget, between the PE and the CE, the signaling is still PIM or for multicast. Right? That does not go away. However, between the PE routers, you need some signaling and overlay. This can be either PIM, as we've had for the last 15 years with the Rosen model. It can now also be BGP. So BGP does the control plane instead of PIM. It kind of sends joins and prunes instead of PIM. Or no overlay signaling, but you just have static mapping on the edge PE routers. Or you have in-band signaling, meaning on the edge routers you translate the PIM control plane packets into packets of the core protocol. In this case, MLDP. MLDP is the only core tree protocol that can do the in-band signaling. So, BGP found a new role. BGP is being used more and more, uh, also for other um, features where it's used as a signaling protocol, for example, eVPN. With mVPN, multicast over VPN, there are two big pillars that BGP does. On the one hand, it does auto-discovery. For example, with the point-to-multipoint TE example, the tail-end routers tell the head-end routers, I want to be part of this point-to-multipoint tree. That's auto-discovery. Or, as we've just seen, it can do the overlay PE to PE signaling, where BGP kind of sends the star comma G, S comma G, joins, prunes, and so on. So it's a big new role, or two roles, for BGP. And for that, we created a new uh, address family. Two kinds of information are carried by BGP. The tunnel information. So BGP says, my information that I'm sending now pertains to a MLDP tree or an MPLS TE tree. And then the prefix itself, the NLRI, holds the source and group information inside the VPN. So which overlay signaling to use? You have a choice now. Before it was only PIM. Now you have the choice between PIM and BGP as overlay signaling protocol between PE routers. Well, again, it depends. If you are very familiar with how PIM and multicast works, which you probably are, then you can stick with PIM and it will work. It has worked for a long time, so it will continue to work. Okay. Um, it is a bit complex, especially with sparse mode, any source multicast, but people are used to it, so they understand it. If you go for BGP, it's something new. So your operations people and design people, they will need to get the hang of it. Right? However, there's one big benefit with BGP, it brings scalability. As always, BGP did this, the routing for IPv4, IPv6, VPN prefixes and so on. We know that BGP is very, very scalable. So if you have a huge deployment, then BGP is probably the answer. And one other advantage is that it's actually a hard state protocol. BGP, because it runs on top of TCP, sends an update once. Whereas with PIM, you have soft state signaling. So which models do we have? Well, if you bring together all the things we've just seen, the core protocols, MLDP, point to multipoint TE, English replication, and so on. The type of core trees, point to multipoint, multipoint to multipoint, and the overlay signaling, PIM or BGP, you kind of have four types of models. It's either default MDT, which is just another name for Rosen, or you have the in-band signaling, only with MLDP. You have static mapping, and you have partitioned MDT. So four types of models. So the default MDT or Rosen, which is actually the same model as we have seen before, but instead of just being able to run PIM now in the core of your network, you have the choices between MLDP, point to multipoint TE, ingress replication. And when you run MLDP, you actually have two choices. Your default MDT can be built by one multipoint to multipoint tree, 
or a full mesh of point to multipoint trees. And you still have the data tree again with those four uh, options. Or you have in-band singling. It means that when you have singling in the core, so between a CE and a PE router, which is PIM, and the egress PE router receives a PIM join, it will be translated into the core tree protocol. In this case, MLDP. Only MLDP supports in-band singling. It will be translated into an MLDP label mapping message, which is then transported hop by hop towards the ingress PE, towards the source or rendezvous point. On the ingress PE, again, it's translated into a PIM message again, a, here a PIM join message, and is sent towards the source or rendezvous point. That's how in-band singling works. What is the obvious down point to this, the disadvantage, is that each time you have state in the edge of your network, it is translated to state in the core of your network. So this is probably not the most scalable model. Static mapping is something which is used with point to multipoint uh, traffic engineering. Um, there's no overlay singling. It's static. It's something that you have to configure. So basically, the head end router learns about the tail end routers with BGP auto discovery, or you configure the tail end routers. Two options. At that point, the, the point to multi point tree is set up, and then the ingress router can start to forward the traffic onto the point to multi point TE tunnel. One added thing is that in this case, you can have BGP auto discovery uh, doing one extra thing, namely advertising the multicast state, S, G, star, G, towards the tail end routers. Because when the tail end routers receive the multicast traffic on this point to multipoint tree, they have to associate this traffic with that specific point to multipoint TE tunnel and figure out which VPN the traffic is for. And finally, partition MDT is kind of like Rosen a bit, but it's more dynamic. It's an MDT, so a distribution tree, between a subset of PE routers, and it's only been built on demand. So it's not always there, like the default MDT. It's only there when we have state at the edge. So when we, when we see a PIM join coming in, then this partition MDT will be built inside the MPLS core. Okay. This is only possible with MLDP, and the trees can be point to multipoint or multipoint to multipoint. PIM or BGP can be used as overlay singling. The only point here is that if you have PIM as overlay singling, there's one specific thing. The PIM neighborships are only unidirectional and only between this subset of routers. Let me show you. That gives you a bit of a added scalability. So basically, this point to multipoint or even multipoint to multipoint tree is only built when there is state at the edge. So when there is a source who starts to send traffic or receiver who starts to send a PIM join, then this partition MDT is built throughout the core of the network. And if there is another source, another set of receivers, we'll build another tree. So this partition MDT is per source inside a VPN. So this is a very optimal, very efficient way of delivering traffic. It's only built on demand. Typically, the use case for this um, model, for this partition MDT, is when you have a few sources only and a few sites. If you have sites all over the place and every site, then you probably want to go for another model like the Rosen model. Now, you're either one of three kinds. You're not interested in multicast at all, that's fine or you have multicast over MPLS VPN today, but with the Rosen model, so PIM multicast in the core, or you want to start deploying multicast the first time over an MPLS VPN network. Okay. If you're the third kind, okay, you can choose any model, just go for it, configure it, and it will work. If you're the second kind, it means you have PIM multicast in the core, but maybe because of the benefits I mentioned before, you want to move to another model with MLDP or point to multipoint, for example, in the core. Is this possible? Yes, this is possible. There are migrations, uh, migration methods possible. 
For example, you typically you would start with PIM multicast in the core, Rosen model. And what you could do is, you could just build another tree built on MLDP or point to multipoint TE, for example, inside the core of your network. And then the migration can be per VPN, per PE, per source, per group, and so on. So it's very, very, very flexible. Once you have both trees in the core of your network, you could just have the egress PE choose between either tree to pull off the traffic. And once, all, once you have done this migration on all the PEs, you can get rid of, in this case, the PIM multicast tree, the red tree that we see here. So you can migrate from PIM multicast in the core to MLDP or point to multipoint in the core. Not only that, but if you want to migrate from PIM signaling and overlay to BGP signaling and overlay, this is possible as well. You just configure both, and then on the PE routers, the leaf routers, you switch them over from PIM to BGP. And very flexible policy as possible there. So, overview. What kind of deployment models are possible? We had four types. First one was MLDP in-band signaling, and there we don't have overlay signaling. It's in-band. Second one is static mapping, typically used for point to multipoint TE. Again, no overlay signaling. <coughs> Rosen models, this is the big one, lots of possibilities. The four core trees are possible there. PIM, MLDP, Traffic Engineer, Ingress Replication. And then the default MDT is built up by either a full mesh of point to multipoint TEs or a multipoint to multipoint tree if you use MLDP. In overlay signaling, you each time have the choice between PIM and BGP. So when you want to go for the Rosen model, you have lots and lots of choices. And finally, partition MDT is actually possible in two flavors, with MLDP in the core or no signaling in the core at all. You just do ingress replication. Okay? And in overlay, again, you have the choice between PIM and BGP signaling. Conclusion. Well, in the slide before, you could imagine that you have a lot of possibilities. Different core trees, different core type of trees, point to multipoint, multipoint to multipoint, and then overlay signaling, non, PIM, BGP. All those combinations give you a lot of choices. In fact, you have 27 possibilities. Okay. Um, which one to choose? Well, the good thing is, first of all, you can choose per VPN. You don't have to do the same for all VPNs, for all your customers. Yeah. Typically, MLDP is a safe choice because it looks, it feels the same like PIM in the core, and you have the most choices. Another safe choice is Rosen. It's kind of the default. If you don't know what to do, go for Rosen. It'll work. You have a default MDP, and for the high-rate flows, you can deploy data MDTs. Typically, traffic engineering would be for video distribution. A few, or maybe many sources, but in a few sites. And you have receivers which are more or less steady. And then finally, which overlay signaling protocol to use, PIM or BGP? Well, you can still use both. Uh, both will work fine. What BGP will give you, and that's a good advantage of BGP, is scalability. So if you really have a huge deployment, then most likely you will have to go for BGP. So with that, I would like to say thank you. If you have questions or you want to discuss something, I will be here throughout the day. So uh, you can always come up to me. <laughs>